Hey guys, Tisha here, and we are back for another Married to Medicine review. Y'all, this won't right. Before that lady got there, they already knew that they planned to ice her out, and I just didn't like how it was done. It was really like a situation where they could have did all of that at home in Atlanta, and to have her come all the way there for a day just to send her back home, I don't think that was right. So we pick up with Heavenly um, saying that Quad is a user and that Quad keeps saying that they're sisters. Heavenly, that was not a statement that was made by Quad. That was a statement that was made by Heavenly. Quad says, you're the one who keeps saying that we're sisters, yet you keep talking crap about me. And she's right. Heavenly does talk a lot of crap about Quad. But I feel like this is also, in some crazy way, Heavenly's way of trying to keep Quad like a part of the group or relevant. I just feel like Heavenly, a lot of times, doesn't respect Quad. The only person who she seems to respect in the group is Jackie. And I, don't, I still don't understand how her and Jackie have kept such a close-knit relationship. But... That's the only person she seems to have respect for. So, Heavenly is sick of the sugar honey iced tea. And Quad is sick of the sugar honey iced tea. <laughs> they, this is what's going on at the table. They're going back and forth talking about things that they're sick of. Simone says, is there any way that we can lower our voices so that Phaedra will have a less hood perspective and just see the authentic personalities? I'm sorry, who the hell is Phaedra? Seriously. They really got... Phaedra over here feeling like she's special and she's royalty and she's something important. And at this point, the only thing that Phaedra has given us is some laughs. Toya says that she does not believe what Quad is saying. Jackie says that they've all gotten to a place where they feel like accountability is necessary and that comes with action. I really don't care for Quad sometimes. But it requires accountability and actions from all parties. She is not the only person who did wrong here, but it's clear that she is the group's next target. And I say that because a lot of this is reminding me of what was done to Mariah. Some may feel like this is Quad's karma, but it just made me feel really uncomfortable. Toya doesn't understand how, based on the things that have happened, she is supposed to just trust her. She brings up how Quad said that uh, they were robbing the neighborhood, calling Eugene Eugina and, and things of that nature. She says, my family and I were going through torture. And Quad says that they've been in the same boat. The problem with Quad is that Quad needs to learn how to listen to people's problems, complaints, feelings, and not make it about her. Anytime anyone says a statement, even if it does apply to Quad as well, that moment right there where they're trying to tell you how they feel isn't the moment for you to also give your grievances. It's your moment to listen to what they're saying and to acknowledge it. But Quad doesn't want to do it. And Quad also doesn't know how to fake it. She needs to learn how to fake it for the purposes of this show. If Quad is trying to stay on this show, she's going to have to learn how to fake it with these ladies. The same way some of these ladies kind of like are somewhat cordial, but not deep. Tisha, these ladies aren't real friends with Tisha, but they're going to include her for the purpose of the show. But they're not real friends with Tisha, at least not at this point. So Simone told her last episode that you keep making it about you when it comes to apology. You always make it about you and you don't consider the, the person's feelings. And this is exactly what she's doing in this moment where Toya is trying to tell her, how she feels quad needs to learn how to apologize without trying to get an apology heavenly says you're not taking accountability you're playing victim simone says you don't f with us all year and then you pop up when events are happening and as a result that comes across to us as being disingenuous i don't like that quad is basically sitting here like 
begging to hang out with them and be cool with them because it's not working. They're not receiving it. Quad, I, just say you want to be on the show. Just say you want to receive a check. Say you miss the ladies to an a certain, certain extent, but also tell the other parts of it because they've already come to the conclusion that that's part of the reason why you want to come back around. Toya says, tomorrow is an important day for me and I like to be surrounded by people who support and trust me. And I said, okay, so with this statement, why did you invite her except to embarrass her? They depart ways. Phaedra, Toya, Jackie, and Simone and Heavenly head back to Toya's suite to talk some more about Quad. They basically feel like they don't matter especially once she became a part of the sister circle. They show some flashbacks of that. Phaedra says she's neutral, that she doesn't have a, a problem with Quad, but at the same point, she doesn't want to bring mess to the party. Phaedra's trying to stay on the show. And as a result, she did what she needed to do to get her there, to show production that she could do some things. And now that the ladies kind of like her, she don't want no parts of it. Simone says... That she can be cordial, but the question comes down to, do they have anything to offer Quad? As I was listening to Simone talk, I said, did they not do this similar thing to Mariah? And I feel like it was Simone. I feel like Simone was kind of the one that kind of started that conversation to exclude Mariah. Correct me if I'm wrong because it's been a long time since I've watched that episode and I haven't rewatched it. So remind me in the comment section about that. Toya calls um, Quad to ask her if she can come to the room so they can talk. She comes to the room and she's basically there to be told by Simone that they've talked and none of them have an emotional connection with her. It's just not going to work. I think it was kind of crappy that she used Quad's words against her, but that's what Simone is great at doing. And Simone is saying that we're just going to ask you to leave the trip. As I said earlier, they could have did this in Atlanta. I think it's foul. The girl won't even there for 24 hours before they told her to go home. They made her feel like a plus one the moment that she got there with all the different things that Toya said and saying, like, I forgot to get you a room and all the other stuff. It was never meant for Quad to be a part of this trip. Quad wants to know how they could come back from this. She thought the resurrection was them coming back. And Simone is saying it's an epic fail. And Toya is over laughing in the most obnoxious way possible. She says, can you acknowledge that I've been hurt? And Simone says, yes, we've acknowledged that you've been hurt for several years now. And for once, people were able to express that they were hurt to you as well without you flipping out. But you still basically managed to kind of flip it back to you being hurt. Quad, they don't want you there, hon. Don't keep talking back and forth with them. Just leave. Quad's feelings are hurt at how easily they dismissed her and she doesn't feel heard. We see it's the next day. She's eating her breakfast and packing to leave. She says she expected this from Toya, but she never expected that from Heavenly because Heavenly is supposed to be her friend. We then see... Um, the different times that she was there for different ladies in the group and she just basically is hurt. That's the end of quad. We see Tisha calling Greg to talk about what happened the night before and how basically her friendship with the group seems dead. Greg, a lot of times when he talks, he's just like a little whiny. I just, I hate listening to him talk sometimes. Toya calls Eugene talks about what happened at the dinner and how Simone basically told her to go home. Eugene is glad that they had solidarity with his wife. Toya tries to clean it up and say that they all had issues with her, but none of their issues were as significant as Toya's and Toya kind of did in the beginning lead the charge to them wanting to hold her accountable and have this talk. I feel like a lot of the ladies are flip-flops because at some point they have all done wrong to one another and they've forgiven each other. And if they really try to, they could forgive Quad, but they don't want to. Heavenly better watch out because if they're successful at phasing Quad out the way it seems like they're going to do, 
heavenly if you keep messing with these ladies and doing the stuff that you do on your youtube and talking with carlos and all of that you'll be phased out too even though if heavenly's phased out i don't think phaedra could carry this show but whatever so we see jackie sitting by her computer waiting for her call from the vice president she says even though this is her sorority sister she's nervous Heavenly is standing there like a proud mama taking pictures of her baby getting ready to be on the Zoom. <laughs> um, we then later see Jackie take the call with the VP. They talk about mortality with black women and how the United States has the highest rate, which is crazy. Um, and all the different things that are being done and being offered to mothers uh, such as extended health insurance for a year after their baby is born, um, the moms having a hotline for their mental and emotional support, things of that nature. It was good knowledge to know. Um, I'll probably put that number 1833-TLC-MAMA if you need that support. Um, overall, the call went well. Jackie is excited. We see all the other ladies up at Toya Suite. She thanks the ladies for their patience during the previous dinner session with Quad and she lets them know that basically Quad is gone because they told her to go. They then head to a wine tasting at Kendall Jackson's Wine Estates. They talk about the, the how heavy the convo was the night before. Simone says that the clouds have been taken away. There's there's light and sun and all this other stuff now in the sky. Don't keep talking about it since she's gone. Let it go. Jackie arrives glowing and excited. They talk about how well it went. The food then arrives. The guy recommends for them to drink a particular wine with the meat, but Simone didn't want that. She wants her rosé and Toya keeps trying to convince her to have this red wine. The lady knows what she wants to drink, Toya. I understand at this point that is your specialty, but let that girl drink what she wants to eat. I mean, drink. <laughs> Heavenly does a toast. And I'm sitting here thinking it's going to be to Toya, but no, I like to toast sweet tea. And I'm like, sweet tea? Really, Heavenly? You, you're trying a little too hard. She apologizes again. We already know it's not going to last that long. The ladies take pictures. A sweet tea has some flasks with some brown liquor in it that she passes out and she takes it to the head. We see Toya meeting up with some of the VPs from the um, company that she partners with. This is like the senior VP of relations and another VP and she's bringing Fed, Phaedra so because she said Phaedra's a good critic as well as a, an attorney who wouldn't have a want to have an attorney around them. They talk about different things that they could do to try to get the wine out there to the urban market. Uh, Phaedra suggests that Toya do like a wine tasting thing with Toya and admission it would be like you have to purchase a certain amount of bottles in order to attend. And the meeting overall goes well. Toya takes the bottle. That's the end of that. Back in ATL, we are with the guys. The guys meet up to play games. I think it's really ironic how Cecil seems to always be able to make these male events, but yet he struggles to be there for things such as a wedding, his friend's wedding. Anyways, the men play games and they all suck. Alicia husband talks about how it's been an adjustment for him because he's never been alone by himself with his children. He has a five-year-old and a one-year-old. And we find out that Damon was very hands-on with the kids and so was Dr. Eugene. And Cecil would kind of fill in for Simone because Simone would always have her boys plus somebody else's even though she was on call at the hospital. For some reason, Eugene brings up the conversation the ladies have with Quad. Sometimes I feel like Eugene overly invests himself. You can tell me what you feel about it down below, but I just feel like each of the husbands will talk with their wives about what happened eventually. We don't need it to be rehashed from the men in front of a guy that was abusive towards the woman that you're talking about. I think sometimes that it comes across as really insensitive at how they didn't back quad in that situation and how quickly they let all of that go. He says their friendship is basically over. I feel like Eugene has a lot to say for a person that wasn't there. Dr. G is happy. He even does a hell yeah in confessionals. 
And when asked, like, did you have a problem with them having a relationship? He admits to having a problem with it. He said that Sweet Tea is the type of person who she, she would have been fine with having a relationship with Quad, but he didn't feel comfortable with it. Sweet Tea very much so was a fan of Quad when she came on this show, um, which I feel like is another reason why she wanted her to sit beside her when she had her party that Quad uh, interrupted. Anyways, back to Napa. The ladies go to a private restaurant they Toya talks about how the wine thing was and how seeing all of this was it was on her vision board. So she's excited about seeing that some of the things come to pass. Simone said that this year, one of the things that she's working on is being more inclusive with Cecil. Heavenly says that something that she's working on is watching what she says because a lot of times she said things they she shouldn't have said and everybody's laughing at it because they're like okay like duh we know this dr alicia then talks about or is it alicia alicia talks about how her and her husband grew up very differently she grew up in a single parent household and he grew up in nigeria with um help and and assistance and things of that nature a lot of people did things for him so it got to the point where there were times in the household where he would be fine with the financial and taking care of all that stuff. But like if things that required manual labor, like a hammer and a screwdriver needed to be done, he couldn't do it. And she would grab the hammer and nail and tell him he wasn't a man. You don't want to demasculate any man. Not for something like that. I'll be honest. There are certain things that I'm not going to ask my man to do. I know his truths. And unfortunately, he is one of those men who will shell out the money to come and have somebody else do it and sit there and do it himself, which some people are like that. Now, my father, on the other hand, is the type of person who, if he can do it, he'll do it. If he knows that there is an expensive job to be done on the home, he'll do as much as he can do and then call on the people to finish up the job. He's that type of person. So you have to understand that everybody's not the same way. And just because someone may not do what you think that role should do isn't a reason for you to come down on them. Um... Simone points out how one of the things that she's noticed about Alicia is that she tends to be more docile, basically, when she's around her husband. But when she's not around him, she's very opinionated. So to her, it's an act. I need for Simone to focus on her crap. Not saying that there might not be anything wrong with that dynamic, but it's really too soon to tell. And you need to respect the rules that they decide for their family. She told you he's a Nigerian man. There are certain expectations that come from a foreign household. I'm just going, I'm going to tell you what it is. I've seen it firsthand how a lot of the men are really treated like they're like the best thing out there since sliced bread and how some of the sons this isn't for every household i'm just talking about what i've witnessed and how in some instances the sons are preferred and the women are expected to do certain things that the men just aren't so don't talk about their dynamic if that works for them that works for them focus on you and cecil because cecil to me looks like he's just going through the moves at this point and y'all tend to bicker a lot and everybody just doesn't want to do that i'm just saying um at some point toya then asks uh phaedra where's dr o and she says we broke up but i already got another doctor that's basically it for this episode. This episode was good, even though it made me mad. I enjoyed this more than I did Married to Medicine. There's just not a whole bunch to really talk about. If you want to discuss something that I did not put in this review, feel free to leave it down in the comment section and I will make sure that I respond. If you have not already done so, please like the video. If you've watched me more than once and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting on? Go ahead and hit that subscription button. And until next time,